hey, how you doing? I thought I would send you a video, um, and then we can we can go from there. So it's kind of like I'm helping you find stuff. One of the problems that we've got is your topic is you're going to find like so much stuff that it's going to be hard to go through. So I'm going to show you some strategies for narrowing down the search. Um, at the at the same time, being more specific. I apologize. I keep touching my nose. It's there's something like the allergies have been so bad that like my eyes have been watering and everything. So if you see me crying, it's not tears of joy. <laughs> it's allergies. So we have eating disorders and we have uh, a specific population, adolescent and uh, female as gender. How do we talk about those things in, um, in the research? Well, you can kind of take a stab at it by typing in any of those keywords and seeing what the breakdowns are. You can also go to Google and you could see what some of the eating disorders are. And a lot of these are talked about on Google casually, so this isn't like looking at the DSM and finding official designations of disorders, but this will give us some of the ideas of what we're looking for. So if you wanted to narrow it down, well, shut my mouth, maybe it will be official. We have the National Institute of Mental Health showing up right at the top. And here's an overview of eating disorders. So here's one thing you could do. You could, so there's anorexia. That one's uh, has been, uh, I've, I've recognized that from media ever since I was a kid. And it talks about the symptoms. Bulimia binge eating. Okay, so there's there's only three that they're talking about, but they, they give you some of the different um, elements within. If you're doing 10 resources and you have to do a literature review, you can think of each source being an element in the story. So one could be about one disorder, another could be about the other disorder, or it could be qualities within it. So even eating even when you're not full or hungry. Oof, during COVID, I would eat when I was bored. Um, so I've, I've, I've taken up walking again. Um, so these are some of the ideas that you have. If you take notes um, about the articles that you find, you could start putting them into kind of a narrative order and you could see if something was like to, um, if you'd had too many articles on one particular topic. So that's one thing you could do. Um, another one is what resources do we go in to look at? The library catalog is a good place to go. Eating disorder. Oh, look at this. I've already done this. I must have done this search when I was writing out the email. When you go into any search in like the library catalog or a database, if it has more than one word in the search term, you have to put it in quote marks. Otherwise, it'll look for eating here and disorder there. Some of the things might be relevant and some of them might not be. So this is another strategy you could do is you could look through everything and see what's written. But you need to find 10 scholarly sources. I'm, I'm, I think I remember. So there are, in the catalog, there's going to be books. There, and ooh, some are even gender specific. Um, there's going to be stuff on course reserves. There's going to be articles. Since you have to find articles, we could go straight to that. So right here, you can see there's 142,000 articles on eating disorder. And I did eating disorder instead of eating disorders uh, because it's going to look exactly for that. So you could try both. Right now, it's looking in many different databases. The library catalog is kind of like an aggregator of all these different things. Um, I'll show you a more specific database. Um, that I think we'll have better results with. But right now, we're just kind of looking for ideas. I, would, I, I just did this, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah, it's like a crab where you're like going out to the seashore and looking for stuff on the beach that's relevant. I'm going to move my head. So there's 142,000 results. That's not sustainable. In the sorting options down the right-hand side, and they're still loading... They're thinking about loading. There we go. One of the criteria that you might have is a date range. So you can go in and you can say, well, I, I don't want anything from 1900. I just want like the last five years. 
Um, so you might go to, oh, are you gonna let me do that? I only want stuff from 2017 to 2022. Why is there stuff from 2022? Researchers will often put dibs on their, um, their research before it's published by just publishing an abstract. So I guess I only did the last four years, technically. But still, there's 33,000. Do you see that number there? We can narrow down to peer-reviewed journals. When you see a scholarly article and a peer-reviewed article or a newspaper article, peer-reviewed are the ones where if I publish something to a clinical practice journal, I'm no longer, rep and, and it's peer-reviewed, I'm no longer representing myself, but I'm representing that whole profession, that whole um, practice, that whole journal. And so peer-reviewed is great. It's like the cream of the crop. So we went from 33,000 <laughs> to 27,000. There's a lot. This is where we could start adding in those population keywords. Um, so we have a, an age range. And we could just do and. And I'm going to do parentheses. You could do this in the advanced search as well. But I don't know if it's adolescent or if it's teen. Yeah, and if there was other synonyms like youth, young, something like that. But these are the two, two typical ones. So what it's going to do now is out of my 27,000 results, it's going to narrow it down to only the ones that have adolescent or teen in the title, the abstract, or the keywords. So it doesn't look through full text. Is it searching? I'm not convinced that it's searching. There we go. Yeah, there's 112,000. That doesn't make any sense. So the library catalog you can come around through. Oh, oh it bounced me out of my peer-reviewed journals. Let's take this search to a database. I encourage you to cruise through the catalog. I think it's useful because you'll get outside of psychology. Um, so let me show you some places where you can look. I think the one that I would start with is Psych Info. That's the name of a database that professors in social work really like because it talks to the, the practice of social work and the, the critical lenses that we look at when assessing a situation. And you can find that by going to the letter P for Psych Info, or you can go by subject and go down to just show me the psychology databases, please. There's a social work database as well, actually two or three, uh, but they're going to be, a lot of them are gonna be talking about public policy, education, and things like that. So PsychInfo is really popular with um, social work, sociology. So I think it's a good place to start. Okay, there's my search, eating disorder in quotes, so it sticks together, and adolescent or teen, Let's add one more. We want to do gender. And girl, let's do girl. If you wanted to do girl or girls, you do a little star um, and it'll it'll catch that or statement. Or female. And it's okay if we just put female um, because we've already assessed the age in a previous search term. It gets really kind of we get into the esoteric weeds because a lot has been written about these topics. So right now we're just in psychology scholarship and there's 6,000 results, but it's not just scholarly articles. There's dissertations, so we have to narrow it down even more. And there's a, a peer-reviewed checkbox here. And there's the dates here, so we can narrow down by date. You can see where I'm going with this. Every time you try and shrink it down, and you're causing the criteria that cause it to shrink. 6,000, this is looking better. Publication date. Let's say, <laughs> is it gonna let me do this? I'll do 2017 again. 
Maybe I have to click somewhere else to get it to sort. So we're going, so we're really specific. And we're going to a particular date range. Oh, and it still has 6,000. Oh, it's stuck on 1974. I had this problem with another database, so bear with me for a second. If it doesn't go, I think I've got a browser problem, and it will work for you. If it doesn't, um, we should try a different browser or something like that. I'll only try this that second time. Yeah, it's the date range, it's not letting me do that. So assume that, that made a big difference in your search. I'll look into that and see what's going on. Uh, but there's other ways of narrowing down. Um, you can go into the subject, which I highly recommend. And you can see some of those things that we looked at in that National Institute of Mental Health. There's the names of the disorders. There's the specific population. Oh, then we're getting into symptoms, risk factors. So each one of these could be something that you did in your lit review, where you could look at, here's one that defines it. Here's one that talks about a specific population. Here's another one that talks about risk factors. And you could also add another keyword like intervention, intervention or treatment. And then you can talk about that. So do you see where I'm going with this? You keep on narrowing it down to the things that you're interested in. And you can see they'll be very descriptive about how they're going about these treatments. Um, and so here's treatment outcomes. They'll talk specifically about the methodology, about the intervention, about the population, about the time, and all sorts of different circumstances. So you should be able to pick and choose the ones that are um, interesting to you, which is like the bottom line of what you should do to pick these 10. Don't try and impress the professor. Try and pick something that you're interested in because you're already into the scholarship. Last thing that I wanted to touch on is some articles have PDF full text right here, and some of them have a view it. What's going on with that? How do I get the full text of something? Um, if you click on the view it, it will open it up in the catalog and it will look for the full text of that article for you. And it'll give you a list of databases that it shows up in. If you can't find it within like 30 seconds or so, email a citation or the, the article information to me and I'll track it down for you. So it should show up in, in one of these databases. You just keep on clicking like mad and if you spend more than a minute on something, send me the citation um, and I'll track it down for you. So if you find the perfect article, hang on to it tenaciously. Um, don't give up because it's, the, it's difficult getting the, the full text. One last thing, since you're doing a bibliography, you have to cite stuff. Most of these things, like the library catalog and this database, have a citation generator. Just look for the word cite. I'm guessing you'll be doing APA. So you can just scroll up and grab it right here. Something to be aware of is that these are almost always wrong. So use this to copy it, but then go through the style and double check to make sure that you have the style correct. They're getting better and better, but still there's sometimes stuff missing and it will aggravate your instructor if you have an incorrect APA citation. Um, let me know how it goes and I'm happy to help you further. This is just kind of like a starting point, uh, but if you feel comfortable going along, um, give it a go and see how you feel and I'm happy to help further. Happy weekend if it's, if it's almost your weekend.